name of this and a young, intelligent, Ghanaian, African guy converted this into a stainless charcoal. This is stainless. I'm wearing white for the first time. Can you see the blood? No. This charcoal is stainless. You know what? Please help me share this video. Uh, no, I gotta, I gotta kneel down. You know what? Help me share. You know the struggle because this brother's story needs to be heard all over the world. I'm inspired and I definitely know that you are also going to inspire with this brother's story. Do me a favor, like the video. We are waste by the beaches and making our beaches so dirty. I took a trip to the beach, saw what was happening there and need then I just told myself something has to be done. At the time, I didn't even know what we could use the waste for. But along the line, I realized I got so much interested in this coconut stuff. I even lost interest in reading law to concentrate on this. And I think in, yeah, in the final year, I had to use the fees to actually start this. Hold on. <laughs> Use your final year school fees yeah, to yeah. start this business. Yeah, 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 yeah. Instead yeah. of becoming a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. Your, your mom was not angry. Uh, uh, initially, they didn't know about it, but eventually they got to know. This guy is a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's how it started, and then, you know, the whole idea began when uh, one day we went to buy kenke. We saw the kenke seller was using the coconut husk in her fire instead of firewood. And that was when it really hit me like, wow. So instead of firewood, she's using this coconut, which is basically free everywhere. And these guys are dumping it by the beaches. Okay, so since firewood is the raw material for charcoal, can we also use the same coconut the woman is using to make charcoal? I actually didn't know anything about charcoal. I joined these guys that make charcoal in the north just to see how they do it. Came back to Accra. I set up a small process in my house to see how I could convert these coconuts to charcoal. Wow. I got so excited I was able to do it. So you move from a small thing to tomato can to a bucket. Within the next week, we're in a barrel. And that same week, we had moved from just one barrel to like 12, 20 barrels. And we started burning. You, you, you started <laughs> making yeah. the, uh, the charcoal, the charcoal in, my, in my house. In your house? Yeah. So where are you getting the coconut husk? So I just spoke to a few coconut sellers that I needed your waste. Eventually, like actually they didn't even know where to dump it. So I was even a savior to them. Wow. These guys would push their coconut waste from wherever and just come dump it in my house. In your house? Yes, so yes. So your house was full I, of... I had a mountain of coconut in my house. A real mountain, actually. Bro, this story is inspiring. You know what? Let's sit somewhere. <laughs> let's go there is something that I'm not understanding. Yeah. You said you started with what? A tin tomato can. A tin can. tomato can. Yeah. A tomato can, I should say. You, you, you were putting the coconut inside? Yeah, so I was experimenting how to burn charcoal. So the process basically is burning something devoid of oxygen. If you allow too much oxygen in, it burns to ash. So you mm -hmm. control the oxygen flow and then you get charcoal. So I had this uh, little tomato can which was big enough. And then we put some pieces of coconut in there. We lit them up, poured sand to cover and prevent oxygen from going in. Wow. It turned out very well, but we had very little charcoal. So the next day I moved to a bucket. So the actual bucket we were using in the house, mm. we made some holes in there and then we were able to get some more coconut, which was still also very good, but also very little. Yeah. So eventually we moved from the bucket to a drum, a barrel. And in the space of a week, we had moved from just a tomato can to like um, 10 barrels. And what were you doing all this? All of this in my house. In your house? Yes. So how did you establish your first factory? Is this your first factory? No, 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 no. The first factory actually started in the house. We designed and built our own machine. We oh, designed, okay. got it built in the Abu Bloshi where the uh, metal guys are. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we gradually moved to some sites behind us. We spoke to family, they released some land and then some bits of the school fees actually bought some machines 
got okay. some help here and there and then we set up a factory which is also quite uh, somewhere in the bush so your your, your family found out after they established the factory uh, yes 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 that's when they realized this guy is no more going to class <laughs> <laughs> right, so welcome to the first ever uh, zako factory ever wow. built in ghana so the first ever i would say charcoal factory that, that's impressive but you said you started from your house yeah which was the first machine that you ever used um this machine right here oh, it's still here exactly yeah so we actually designed it ourselves yourself yes we designed it because when we are got you a the mechanical engineer i'm not but i'm a very curious person so we designed this machine ourselves drew everything on paper how we wanted it to work and then went to Agubulushi where we have the old men that work on metals and then they built this for us. We used it for some time and it was good. And then we had to upgrade. That's impressive, bro. <laughs> and from this machine you moved to which And then machine? from this machine we moved to over there where all those blue machines you see. So at the time we moved here, the electricity situation here wasn't too good. In fact, there, was, there wasn't electricity in this part of town. So we actually got this manual one where we started, you know, yeah. Everything is manpower. Yeah, we started it. There's a diesel engine, so you connect and then diesel power. That's the cooler over there. So this was the our grinder. Wow. We use this. So if you look at it, we station, we position them such that the same machine can power this and the same machine can power the other oh, machines wow. there. You just connect the belt and then they work. My brother. You know, I just want to know how many people started this business with you or you started it all alone? Um, first was myself alone. I got in one more person and then got in some more people. Gradually, we are about uh, 12 people here. So but then we have so many people on the street collecting coconuts for us. Do you believe that Africa is the future? We already are. And Africa definitely, the, the world can't progress without Africa. We are the future even from henceforth. It's, it's, I, I, it's an understatement. I interviewed somebody and he told yeah. me, no, Africa is not a future. Come on. Africa is the present. <laughs> <laughs> I think I agree with that too. <laughs> you know, everything revolves around Africa. It's like when Af Africa coughs, the world catches a cold. Wow. Yeah. That's new. Yeah, yeah we, control, we control all the resources in the world. Not just natural resources, but the human resources because the people on the continent are also very worthy. Yeah. My man, My you know, I don't know why I'm so excited to talk to you. I wish <laughs> I can you. spend the entire day on this YouTube channel for people to know that You're always indeed, welcome. I really appreciate you. You're always welcome, my From brother. From a thin of what? A tomato, tomato can. Tomato can to this one? It's incredible, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Really how, appreciate how did you it. manage to operate this one? Um, so eventually we got family involved. People didn't really believe in what we were doing. I, I think they didn't really understand why somebody would risk himself to do charcoal. Somebody would be this passionate about charcoal. And the fact that people don't use it, they assume nobody else does. So eventually I had to fall on family members, take some support here and there, and then uncles, aunties, and then so gradually we built this place. They and supported your yeah, dream. Family has really supported. Um, on behalf of um, his uncles and aunties. I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you. Thank I, I believe you. that this is how Africa is supposed to be. Exactly. We need to encourage exactly. entrepreneurship. Yeah. But in Africa, they tell us to go to school, be a lawyer, be a, <laughs> be be a, doctor. Be a doctor. And at the end of the day, we end up on Facebook and become YouTubers. <laughs> 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 like, you know, you know, I just want to know. You cannot tell me that. You just woke up and started yeah. creating all these things. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. there should be challenges that you face as a young there, There's been well, loads and loads and loads no, of challenges. On, tell us some of the, I mean, the most challenging one. First of all, convincing people that it's possible to even make charcoal out of this was a challenge. Wow. The second of it was, as a young man, you've been able to prove something was viable. Now, how do you scale up to this stage where you're able to make enough revenue to sustain the business. Mm. That was one big headache. It's mm. been a very long journey. I think I went to every pitch event, spoke to almost every investor that I got in contact to, but people didn't really, I, that's what I feel. I feel like they don't really understand what we go through. We've had, 
we've had our machines stolen, we've had a lot of setbacks. There's been a lot of tears, you know, a lot of tears. Uh, we've cried a lot, but we've also learned a lot. And this whole process or this whole journey, I would say, it's been tough, but I've grown to be tougher. Did you have government support? Not yet, but it will come. <laughs> we look forward to it. <laughs> the government never supported you? Government support will come, hopefully. It seems he doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> so, you know, like, you just let us know, like, acquiring the land and all that. Yeah, government support will come. We believe once we are getting onto the market, government will get to know how much we are solving You know, like, trust me, uh, maybe you want the government mm -hmm. to support. It's okay. But we me, love I to got, have government support. I got support. an army on YouTube who are ready to support. Like, we me, love this that. is what we do. It's by force. You know what? <laughs> we are ordering 100,000 pieces today. Wow. No, 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 no. no. I'm going to force it on them. They, they, they know how we do it. Yeah. You can export. Yes, we do export. We do export. Um, I'm going to um, give you money. 100 Thank you. pieces. Thank and you. each and every subscriber of mine you need to order the hundred thousand. If we don't order the hundred thousand, no new video. Thank you, my brother. No new video. Thank you, my brother. my brother. This is the kind of support we need. No, we need to support people like you. Like you have no idea. Like I wish I can just come say, on, no, man. Just, come on, man. Listen, like you, you live, you live in the dream, bro. Thank like you. Like I said, we need factories in Africa. Yeah. I mean, there are yeah. a lot of young Africans watching yeah. us right now. Yeah. If you should advise young Africans, what will it be, brother? My advice has always been. To just be different um, I like this favorite um, quote of mine from Steve Jobs he says why join the Navy when you can be a pirate you don't always have to go where everyone is going you can have carve your own path and be the best at it we can't all be doctors we can't all be lawyers you can be different can you take us around so let, me take, you, let yeah. me take you through the you. process <laughs> here controls the entire factory, factory from the input point to the output point to even the packaging line. So you can see we have burner, we have fans, we have our press, we have entry conveyors, we have mixers, everything is here. We have sensors that detects everything. So this controls the entire factory and this factory has a capacity of three tons per hour. A ton is like a thousand kilograms. Wow. And this place that's three tons every hour. Bro, I would say that you're on another level. Thank you. Because Thank you. I know that the local way of, I mean, getting a charcoal <laughs> is just is fire, and you are showing me computers. A computerized production That's process. Amazing, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Like, I'm really impressed. Thank you. I got so many people watching us right now. Thank Do you have you. any message for them? Anything you want to tell them? We can make it in Africa only if we believe it's possible. It all begins with a dream, but we are all capable of achieving our dreams let's make it happen it's the only continent we have you know south africa nigeria we're all one people come on let's support each other imagine us exporting zako to sa or nigeria and then maybe nigerians import we're bringing in whatever they produce we trade amongst ourselves and we grow together it's gonna happen sure sure On this channel that is what we are in for and i know you're so doing a good prepare job prepare for it good nigerians are gonna order uh, people from, I know, especially Jamaicans, I'm going to send this <laughs> to Jamaica, Haiti, United States. Um, no, I'm sorry, I can't mention all of you, but to the entire Caribbean, yeah. we are shipping this charcoal. But hey, this is the episode that I really want to start for Africans who never left the continent, but they managed to make something big in here. I'm impressed, brother. There's a brand called Fubu. Mm -hmm. I think we can start Faba for Africans by Africans. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this amazing episode.